All right, let's have a look at this old familiar friend. Ryan, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Great. This is Pythagoras' theorem. We love Pythagoras' theorem because we're good at Pythagoras' theorem. It's easy to work with. Okay. Now what I want to point out to you is just have a look at what I've written uh, as these equations that you recognize as Pythagoras' theorem. Um, quick question, which one is Pythagoras' theorem? Okay, now, in some ways, in some ways it's a trick question because uh, clearly I got to this line from this line. Do you see? What did I do to both sides to get from here? Yeah, I subtracted b squared from both sides, right? And then I did a bit of a switch, okay? So they're the same object. Usually we state Pythagoras' theorem in this way, okay? Agni, are you good? Great. However, we use this one sometimes. I'm going to ask you a question. When would we use the first one and when would we use the second? Because they're slightly different. Arib? Use the first one when you're finding the hypotenuse. And the second one when you're finding a short side. Okay. Just in case you didn't catch that, right? Even though you really can find anything you need from either of those, we tend to use the top one when we're after the hypotenuse C, and we tend to use this one when we're after a shorter length. The question is, how did you know? How did you recognize? See, here's the hypo hypotenuse over here. It's, um, it's the subject of the equation, right? It's the subject. The subject is the thing you're after. Like when you see this, what is the thing you're trying to find? You're trying to find the area of a circle. You, I mean, you can find the radius if you know the other thing, but this is what you're after. That's why you put it front and center. Same deal over here. Okay. Now, yesterday, when we wrote the sign rule, I actually wrote it in two ways. Do you remember what they were? I wrote one like this. And then I wrote another one just like it, but upside down. Like so. Now just like up here, both of these guys are the sign rule. They're both the sign rule, but which one you use depends on what you're after. Okay? Have a look at this guy. What looks like it's closest to being the subject? What's closest? You actually did this a lot yesterday. It's um, going to be little a, this guy here. Because it's quite easy to multiply both sides by sign whatever, and then you have a, little a as the subject. What about this guy down here? What's the subject? It's going to be this guy. This is what turns up being easiest. Okay? Now, you really can use either, just like you can use either form for Pythagoras' theorem. But if you're trying to find angles, like we're about to do today, then what I like you to do is write it like this. That gets the angle in a nice convenient spot. Okay? So let's ha have a go at 2a. Can you draw the diagram for 2a? Now, what are we going to use these colors for? When you're using the sign rule, you're thinking about the positions of angles and sides in relation to each other. What you need is an angle. That's the one you're trying to find. In this case, what's it called? What's this side? It's alpha. It's that Greek letter. And you want to compare it to the side that's opposite, which in this case is 9, over there. Okay. In the same way, I want to think about the other angle that I know and the side that's opposite, which in this case is 11. Okay? I highly encourage you to draw it like this so you can identify which one is which, and that's why having two colors is handy. Okay? Now that I know what's what, I'm going to state the sign rule with the information from this question. So I'm going to have sine alpha on 9. There's an angle and its opposite side. What will the right-hand side look like? Okay, sine, because don't forget it's the sine rule. Sine of 59 degrees divided by 11. Okay, so from here I just have to multiply both sides by 9 and then get my calculator ready. You're going to get an answer for this from your calculator. I'm going to encourage you to put in 9 sine 59 on 11 and you're going to get some decimal points. Um, lots of them, actually. Can you write them down for me? Maybe give me like four or five. Give me more detail than you need. Has anyone got it already? Yeah. Yep, what do you got? 0 0 yep. Three, sorry? 
dot, dot, dot. Okay, so this is enough for me to say, look, I've got the actual number. When I'm the marker and I have a look, if I see this, I know you've done in your calculator, whereas like this, you could have just guessed that at random. Okay, that you can't guess at random if it's exactly right. The next step is, I actually don't want sine of alpha, I want alpha. So what will I do? Yeah, shift sine. So you're going to get this on your calculator display, dot, 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 which is equal to, say again, 40, dot, 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 dot. Now, at this point, look at the question. Look at the question. Does it ask for approximation of any kind? Near 0.1, okay, so in this case that'll be 44.5 degrees. Yeah, 0.1 degree, one decimal place, yeah. That's alpha, okay. Quick sense check, 44.5 degrees, does that look about right? Yeah, look, a smaller angle, angle opposite a smaller side, thumbs up, okay.